Whoa. <laughs> Minor earthquake. <laughs> I, yeah, I just came back from where there were earthquakes. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Carol at Big Cat Rescue and this is Jennifer Leon. And it's, oh, look at that. You have a lion on your screen. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, you don't know this. It took me a year to figure this out. Joseph Lion, my father's name is Jose Leon. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine my surprise that it took me that long to figure it out. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, uh, the reason that we wanted to talk to you and um, today is because of all the stuff that's going on with the Florida Panthers. So tell us what's happening with the alert and the backstory to that. Sure. So the Florida Panther has been in the crosshairs of potential uh, threats from ranchers, uh, developers, and hunters, gosh, for at least two decades now. And in the end of June, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, so the federal agency charged with protecting endangered species, announced that they were going to review the status of the Florida panther, meaning that they were going to determine if the science that's out there and the current situation for the Florida panther still deemed it necessary to protect it. Right now, the Florida panther is protected under the Endangered Species Act as a uh, endangered species. There's two levels, endangered and threatened. And it was actually one of the first animals to be put on the Endangered Species Act before it was even a federal law. I didn't know that. Yeah, back in the day when it was like as easy as saying, we're going to protect this, <laughs> <laughs> they got put on a list. And then a few years later, the Endangered Species Act actually was passed by Congress. And so they were automatically kind of grandfathered into that list. Uh, so they've been protected for many decades now. Uh, but sadly, like I said, a lot of people want to delist them or downlist them to remove their protections or ultimately completely eliminate their protections. And even though this review by the federal government is a standard review, they do this for every species approximately every five years, this time it's it's serious. Um, there's some science out there arguing for delisting. It's not the only science, but there's some of it out there. And these folks have been bullying the federal uh, agency, FWS, for a long time now to really remove these protections. The Florida panther, at best, is at a population count of 230. It's located in a few small counties here in Florida. It's one of the most endangered species in our world, and especially here in our country. And we need to really speak out for this animal because what happens with this cat will not only obviously um, decide the fate of a species, of a subspecies, but it will also decide the fate for a lot of other animals because it will have implications as to how the federal government continues to manage and takes actions on other species. It's, it's, it's a serious thing. <laughs> what happens if we lose the Florida panther? What happens to the environment? Well, the Florida panther is an umbrella species. We have this really cute visual of a, a Florida panther holding up a really, really, really broad brim umbrella. And what that means is that because it's at the top of the food chain, uh, its behaviors, its diet, the way it affects other animals, the flora and fauna in its habitat, help keep the environments uh, healthy, help keep the environment striving, and help produce uh, safe areas for not only smaller animals, but for the plants. So it's when the moment you start losing an umbrella species, it has this deteriorating effect on all the animals below it, this cascading effect, where if you're losing your top predator, the animal directly below it that it preys upon, in this case deer, is going to become overabundant. It's going to start destroying the flora in the area, which again uh, is usually the print name prime or the prime food source for your smaller fauna, your smaller animals. So then those animals start de depleting and it just has this horrible effect. We've seen it before. Um, Yellowstone is a wonderful example of what happens when you remove an apex predator from an environment. Uh, thankfully, they reintroduced wolves into that environment and it, it, it just it changed the entire landscape of Yellowstone for the better. So we don't want to see that kind of decline here in Florida. And we want to see the Florida panther not only succeed in southwest Florida, but in the entire state. What are things that people who are watching this could do to help with this right now? Well, right now we are, what, what day is it? 25th. We are four days away from the end of the commenting period meaning that the federal government, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, is taking public comment up until August 29th on the Florida Panthers protective status. They're really seeking scientific input, but they can also accept, and they do accept, public comments uh, with you and my, our opinion, 
as to whether or not we need to continue to protect the Florida panther. And we actually have an action alert set up. If you guys go to catlaws.com, Oh, sorry, the wrong thing there. I was really hoping we had an easy URL. <laughs> yes, I make it rather than our salsa links, right? So if you go to catlaws.com, I put it right up here. And if you uh, scroll down, you'll see many ways you can help the cats, not just panthers. First, we have a section for U.S. residents only. We have the call of the wild, <laughs> which everybody should do. Do it, do it. <laughs> and then directly underneath the call of the wild, we have the section that says, keep Florida Panther protections intact. If you click on this link right here, it will take you to this action alert. It's a bit lengthy. You don't have to read it all, no worries, but feel free to read it. And if you, <coughs> all you have to do is go to the bottom of the screen here. I'm zooming in to make it easier. You can put in your address. I'll put our address in here at Big Cat. Does this work for anybody, anywhere? Any U.S. resident works for any U.S. resident, and then we'll put our zip code. <coughs> and once you do that, this pre-populated email will pop up. I highly recommend using the talking points that are up here to uh, personalize your message. The more personalized the message is, the more likely it will have a greater impact. But you can use these talking points or any other talking points you know about. Uh, if you have a science background, anything that you can suggest regarding the genetics of the Florida panther, if you live in panther habitat, um, any personal accounts about panthers would be useful. And even if you don't live here in Florida, just acknowledging the value of the species would be really important to add to your comments. But it's pre-filled down here, so you would just put in your information and click Submit, and then your message will be sent to David Schindel, who is uh, directing this review and your comments are really valuable. We found out, I wanna say two weeks ago, uh, that Big Cat Rescue has submitted over 2,000 comments, wow. our supporters. Oh my goodness. So, um, you guys are awesome. Yes, That's like, epic. it makes me wanna cry, because here's what's amazing about it. Um, a lot of people say, well, I don't, I don't have like the knowledge base to provide uh, information that will be useful to this review. And even if you're not a scientist, your comments matter because the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, they need to know that people care about this species and that if they choose to downlist or delist a Florida panther, people will hold them accountable. That is incredibly important for them to know and usually these things happen without the public really being aware of it and they don't usually find out until it's too late and we're really trying to get in ahead of time. There's going to be a lot of other things coming down the pipeline for the Florida panther. Um, I'm creating a website. Probably none of it good. <laughs> none of it good, no, but, but here's the great thing. And that's what I love about being a big cat rescue. We don't wait till it just is sad and complain about it. We do something about it. And that's why I love my job here. So we're gonna fight every single one of these actions. We have won actions before, we can win them again. Um, and I really think that this is a fight we can win for the Florida Panther and we can celebrate it. And what better animal to protect than our state animal here in Florida? I love that, absolutely love that. Uh, for some of you who have probably never seen Jennifer, she she said Hi. earlier that she was probably the most boring person here, which is not true. It's just you never see her working around the cats. And yet without people like Jennifer that are really on the front lines of saving these cats, there wouldn't be any cats out there for you guys to see. So um, she okay. is our director of outreach, and I wanted you to tell everybody what your typical job is. What do you do here for the animals? Yeah, um, so I kind of manage four areas, not... Equally, they all have different weights depending on the time of the year. Um, I manage our education program, so anytime a kid contacts Big Cat Rescue about a project or a question they have, I'm the person that they talk to. I have really wonderful experiences working with students who are studying animals, trying to understand uh, how they behave in captivity. My favorite are the kids who contact me because they don't understand why we have these cats in captivity, and that just blows my mind because um, it's really amazing how p the way we think about animals has changed since I was a kid. It, I, I, Carol's nodding her head. It, we're constantly shocked at the things that kids can think about and say and study in school. So um, I deal with our education programs, any schools that come out, any schools that want someone to speak to them. I do presentations in schools and at events. I also manage our advocacy campaigns, so the Call of the Wild, uh, when we had the Circus Free Pledge, which is still ongoing. Uh, we also did, uh, we, we do things here locally in the state, some campaigns here in the state. 
I manage our policy and legislation initiatives. So for instance, recently uh, the city of New York had a proposal to ban the use of wild animals in the surface. So I was our go-to person here on that to make sure that Big Cat Rescue had a voice in that. And, um, I had to sit through all of those hearings. <laughs> oh, but I'm a nerd. I love them. <laughs> um, and again, I work here locally in the state regarding captive wildlife rules when it comes to how captive wildlife is managed here in the state of Florida since we're one of the worst states for keeping captive wildlife. And I work with advocates across the country on that as well. Hand how can in people hand get involved season. with your advocates? They can, there's a lot of people here I bet would love to be an advocate. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's as simple as, let's see, I always forget what redirects. I think it's just go to bigcatrescue.org slash advocates. Ooh, let's find out. Is it going to redirect? <laughs> it's not stopping. There we go. Yay. So that will redirect to the advocates page. If you scroll down, you can actually just immediately uh, sign up to be an Avocat by clicking enter now. You'll also be entered into a contest uh, to visit Big Cat Rescue and have this all expenses paid vacation. Actually, that's not true any oh, longer. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say that. <laughs> you used to. You but used this to. This was our last year that we did that. Oh, okay. So, well, but now you get the chance to speak of for cats. So that's even better. Um, if you scroll down, though, you'll see different ways that you can be an advocate. Uh, for some people, it's as simple as just receiving our alerts. So, for instance, with the Florida Panther, I sent out an alert at the beginning of the month when we first found out about this comment period, and I just sent out another one two days ago. So you'll receive those alerts and get an opportunity to speak up. Uh, if you can uh, also take action at cutalls.com, which is this lovely page right here that's zoomed in, so you can see there's many different options there for how you can take action, whether you're a U.S. resident, if you're an international supporter, we love you guys too. So there's all these things that you can do for cats. And then sometimes you have state specific actions. You can uh, take action when it comes to abusive, abusive exhibits and unaccredited zoos. I know we have a lot of supporters that bring this stuff to our attention. So you can read up more about what you can do there when you see abuse. In these organizations. You can call and write your legislators. Obviously you should vote for legislators who support animal issues. You can also host a movie screening. So uh, there's information here on how to reach out to me if you're in a university or in a community that has maybe a library that's open up for movie screenings. Contact me. We'll send you a copy of a video that's pertinent to the issues and we can help you set up a local event. And then you can table an event in your community. A lot of people like to table events like uh, community fairs, fall flings, and put information about Big Cat Rescue. We have advocates, young and old, do that for us. But there's all these options. The best way to keep in touch with us day to day, though, is to join our Facebook group. Uh, I don't have that pulled up, but once you sign up to be an advocate, it will link you to our Facebook group. I do require that people sign up to be an advocate first, but if you have done that already, it will link you straight to our Facebook group where we're constantly posting new ways that uh, advocates can not only be engaged and help cats, but support each other. So it's really awesome. Ah, that's wonderful. Yeah. And I just, I so appreciate the fact that you are here and taking over all of this and doing it so well. I, I was on... I was out in, I started to say vacation. I was uh, that's not vacation. vacation. <laughs> you were working. <laughs> I was in Seattle at an Amazon conference for nonprofits, and I got an alert about the Florida Panther, and I was like, you know, a couple of years ago, I would have had to stop everything and research that and send out that alert, and Jen just takes care of all of that, and she makes sure that those things get done, and she does it much better than I ever could because she devotes so much time and energy to all of the research behind it, so it really helps me a lot and it helps you guys get a much uh, better picture I think of what's going on so I, I really appreciate what Jen's doing here and I really appreciate that you guys are all helping her because man does it take a tribe <laughs> of people to make a difference so the more of you that can join as advocates the faster we'll get these laws to protect these cats both yeah. in the wild and in captivity is there, um, well, I wanted to tell everybody a little bit about how you came here. <laughs> we only hire from our volunteer pool, and Jennifer was like a, an invisible volunteer. She had been working behind the scenes for years, putting together huge databases 
of all of the bad guys and all of the horrible things that they're doing out there. And it was because of the work that she did there that we thought, man, she would be so perfect for this job when the education uh, director role opened up. But she wanted to expand it into something bigger, and that's why she's our director of outreach. So it's not just our education department any longer. Um, are you, I'm sure you're familiar with what's going on with the Animal Welfare Act right now and their request for comments. Can you yes. talk about that? Yes, I actually just posted about that to our <laughs> advocate group. Oh. Um, it's one of those things where you don't want to get too excited, but it's really exciting. So the Animal Welfare Act for many years has had, has had all these loopholes and kind of automatic processes that really make it easy for animal abusers to get away with so much. Uh, among the many things, and Carol talks about this all the time, how you could easily bypass state bans on the private ownership of big cats by filling out one page USDA application, submitting it. You could submit it for any animal you want, maybe a hamster, let's say. And every year your application will automatically renew even if you change the kind of animals you have. So if the following year you decide to have a lion, you're good to go. You don't have to prove that you are capable of caring for a lion. You don't have to uh, prove that you haven't violated the Animal Welfare Act in previous years. And so the USDA is finally getting wind of this. Uh, <laughs> and I know there have been amazing people in the animal welfare community long before I was even um, aware of big cat issues who have been bringing this to their attention. And they're finally doing something about it. So between now and I think it's October 28th. That sounds right. Yeah, don't quote something. me. Late October. <laughs> We have the option to submit public comment on rule changes for the USDA. Among the rule changes would be ending the automatic renewal. So no more automatic renewal after uh, three to five years. You would have to not necessarily reapply, but at least resubmit your information when you want your license, confirming what kind of animals you have. So if you've decided to expand your menagerie to tigers and lions, you would have to make note of that. You would also have to explain why you're capable of taking care of these animals. You would have to uh, submit any evidence of breaking state, federal, or local or, um, state, federal, or local laws regarding animals. So that's huge. Uh, these people. Because most of these people have horrible. Oh yeah, as Carol <laughs> said, when I I'm weird in that most people I think. I think Afton and I are wonderful opposites in that Afton started taking care of the cats because she loved them and the more she volunteered here the more she learned about all the horrible things. I learned all the horrible things up front and had no idea what happened at Big Cat Rescue on a day-to-day -day basis as far as the sanctuary. So we had very different tracks. So yeah, for too long I just kept reading all these awful incidences of uh, licensees having just hundreds of violations and continuing to be licensed. So this would be amazing if this happened. Um, I actually, I have the suggested uh, changes right here and I was talking with Afton about oh them earlier. Oh my goodness, look at all the highlighting you did. Wow, this is so, <laughs> you're highlighting okay, the whole yes, page. yes! <laughs> um, they want to get rid of the loophole that we talk about all the time where if you're not, so right now, if you are licensed by the USDA, you have to either breed your cats or exhibit them. Uh, so you have to take them out in public. So obviously here at Big Cat Rescue, we have a USDA license because we exhibit. Well, a lot of people uh, decide step state laws that ban the private ownership of big cats because they claim that they're exhibitors when really they just have one tiger in their living room that maybe once a year they drive around. So the USDA is probably like, oh, maybe we should stop this. I don't know. Maybe private owners are a bad idea. <laughs> so I'm super, I'm like, I'm so giddy about this. I'm trying not to get too excited. Um, let's see. There were other really cool things. Like they have to um, demonstrate compliance with the law. I already kind of mentioned that. There are a few things that are kind of redundant and get into the weeds, which is no fun for people. But for me, being the policy nerd I am, I'm really excited. Um, and they're going to change it where right now when you apply for a license, if they come to your facility and everything's awful and you get all these violations, they go, oh, it's okay. We'll come back. And they give you a second time and a third time. And if by the third time you're kind of good, you get your license. Well, they're looking like they're going to cut that back to maybe just two times. It's not a full win, but that's still surprisingly a win. So <laughs> um, right now, uh, Animal Legal Defense Fund has a really good action alert that they already set up. So I 
figured I'd jump on their bandwagon. And I have not only shared that on our Avocat page, but it's also on our cat loss site. I noticed that the link that ALDF was sharing was not working this morning. So I oh. actually went all the way through to government, to whatever that is, government.gov or so. Oh, <clears> wait, <throat> is it, did you change it after me or did I change it before you? I did not change it. I didn't know you put it on cat loss. So click on oh. it and see if it'll actually go. And then on their page, oh. if you scroll down I and where it says take action on their link, that was where it was stalling out. Oh, no, oh, we're good. Now. Okay, so good. don't be overwhelmed. Um, again, these things are not meant or not built for the public to take action. They are meant for the public to take action, but they um, are definitely not expecting the, common to the public to take action. So they put all of this regulatory stuff that really seems overwhelming. But if we go back to the, the ALDF page, which is directly linked from our cat laws, it kind of explains up here what's going on. They're focusing specifically on the automatic renewal process, and we have some time to focus on other things, but right now this is a good start. And this applies to like puppy mills. And oh my gosh, too. yes. So this applies to puppy mills. This applies to people who are in the practice of what they call horse soaring. Uh, this applies to any animal business in the U.S. government or in the, in the country, I can't speak, in, <laughs> in the U.S. So whether it be um, farmers, millers, um, people who exhibit their pets, research laboratories. This is all stuff that we can get on board on. It's all animal related. Uh, so right down here though where it says, will you join us to urge the USDA to uphold the law and protect, protect animals? It gives you some talking points. It also gives you a sample comment which you can literally just copy and paste. So when you click back on that link, you can go to comment now and just paste that language right into here. But once again, I always recommend personalizing your statements. They don't need to be perfect. Uh, you don't need to be um, a, a scientist or a farmer or, or a licensee to know what to say. Your thoughts matter, and so you should definitely personalize your comments. Can and you if I could add something to that, I was really outraged the way USDA treated HSUS during a recent thing with the cub handling because there were over 100,000 comments oh. that HSUS had gathered, yeah. but USDA said they only counted as one because people wouldn't personalize their, their comment. Yeah. And so just change it a little, but for goodness sakes, change yeah. it or it's not going to count. And that's true of a lot of federal agencies, even with this Panther comment period. Um, we have higher numbers of comments that have been submitted, but I think what they're doing is if the comments read the same word for word, they just lump them together as one, which is, um, you know, it's unfair to say the least. So definitely change it up, even if it's just really your first sentence is the best thing to change up. You do not have to put your personal information outside of your name, your first and last name, and that's just for legal records, but you do not have to put your contact information, uh, your full contact information unless you want. And then you just click continue. When you do that, it will let you know what the number is for your statement so you can refer back to it in the future. And this comment period, again, I believe closes at the end of August, or I'm sorry, the end of October, I mean. October 24th. So you guys have some time, but it's still important that we comment now, we comment regularly. And again, for, if for no other reason to let them know we're attentive to this issue that we're going to hold the USDA accountable if these changes aren't made. They came up with these changes on their own and they're asking now for public input on that. So that says a lot about what they're doing and what they're thinking internally. And I think we should give them some credit for um, offering up so many good changes. It is really exciting. I, I couldn't believe my right? eyes when I read it this morning. It was like, really? You're going to take this common sense into consideration? <laughs> the fact that they even acknowledge it's a loophole. I was like, Oh my god, they said the word. <laughs> I was just so excited. And I know we're not the only ones. Um, like I said, I, I, I know a lot of people who've been working on this for a long time. And, and you, I'm sure know more people than I do who have. And so it's very thrilling. And fingers crossed. Uh, there's not many good things happening for animals right now. So this would be a, a really big win. I see a lot of people have been posting comments and unfortunately I wasn't writing them down. So if you have any questions, can you ask them again right now? Jay Smith and Jill says her Congress guy is probably getting tired of hearing from her. Hi, Jay. Yes. Well, Jay's an amazing advocate, so that's a good thing. <laughs> and Teresa says hi from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Hello, Alabama. You know, a lot of good things going on there and a lot of work to be done. We have some amazing advocates uh, in that state. So 
I always say it's easier to be in the states on the coast where all this animal stuff already is like ahead of the game, but it's better to be uh, particularly here in the southern states and the Midwest where these gains still need to be made for animals. So your voice is even more valuable. All right, looks like I don't have any other questions. Thank you so much, everybody. And thank you, um, Jen. Amy Snowden Brooks said, hi, Jen, and welcome back, Carol. And Jay Smith and Jell said the same thing. Aw, thanks, Jennifer and Carol. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>